The Cirrus SR22G7, familiar yet new. Let's talk about it. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Three days ago, Cirrus Aircraft, one of the premier names in single engine aircraft, they announced the next generation for the SR series. If you're not familiar with the Cirrus brand, this is what you consider the Mount Rushmore of piston or single pistons. And I say that because for about the last decade, at least since I've been in the game of aviation, this single category of aircraft has been dominated by Cirrus. So the SR20, SR22 series have just about outsold every other brand in the industry for the better part of the last decade. Also, the SR series happens to be the most expensive, right? So if you compare the Cirrus SR22 to maybe a Cessna 182, chances are you're paying more for the Cirrus. So even though they're the most expensive, they've outsold everybody. And I think there's a reason for that. Something that Cirrus does better than anybody else is good marketing. They target, they know their audience, but more so they take care of those customers and they cater to those same customers every single time. I know Cirrus was part of my journey when I first started flying, although it's out of my pocket when it comes to the price, but I can't tell you how many Cirrus aircraft videos that I watched before I started flying, during my time as a student pilot, and even after I started flying. So they've had a great impact on influencing me to be part of this world. Over the years, I've had the privilege to check out every single model that Sirius has made, the SR20, the SR22, and then the Vision Jet. And if you wanna see those videos, check in the description below, or I should post them up here somewhere. But while you're here, let's talk about the Generation 7. The airframe itself, if you look at this plane, it looks just like any other series that you've seen about the last 10 years. What's new is when you step in the cabin of the airplane, and let's do that. I look at this cabin, it is beautiful, it's, it's lush, and honestly, there's nothing I would change about the design of this interior. What's new though in the G7 is the cockpit. Just about everything else in this interior is the same from previous years, but when you look at this cockpit, they've changed the face of it, and Think of it as a mirror to the Vision Jet. Let's put both of them on the screen right now. This is the Vision Jet cockpit, and this is the SR22 cockpit, or the new SR22 cockpit. I do think this is a great move on Cirrus part because part of their goal is to transition their pilots from the entry level SR20 to 22, and then the Vision Jet. And I think something like this makes it a lot more seamless when you go from an SR22 or 22 Turbo into a Vision Jet. Now, the key features here that I see, right, let's go from left to right. One, obviously, you have the now new touch screens right there in the middle, but if you go from the left side, you see a push to start button. Now, I could be wrong, but this is the first time I'm seeing this in a series. Generally speaking, you don't get cool features like this in a single piston. But in the experimental world, we've been doing this all day, every day. If you all recall, in my own airplane, these are features that we implemented uh, in the experimental world. But in a certified world, this is the first time that I'm seeing one. So I think this is a cool feature, but it's not necessarily new, at least for folks like me from the experimental world, we've had push to start for a while now. And while we're on the push to start feature, make sure you push that like button for me it really helps out with these videos, thanks. But even further left is your stick, your joystick or hand stick. Now, all Cirrus models have the side sticks, and I think this is a good way to save real estate and give comfort for those of us with longer legs. Uh, you don't have to have a stick in the middle, but with the side sticks, it makes it a lot easier uh, to one, place your hands, but also you don't have anything in the middle of you. But what's different with the G7 is that the stick itself is again mirroring the Vision Jet. Now, if we go further right, obviously we have our primary display. Those are huge screens in front of you, have secondary display to your right. But what's really new with the G7 are these two new Garmin 
screens, which are touch screens. What you used to have there was this big keypad, the perspective, you can call it that, but now you have touch screen. Again, new in the series, not necessarily new to every pilot. If you come from the experimental world like I did, we already have this, okay? If you get a G3X Touch, these are the same features or similar features. Also, it's a Garmin product. Uh, but again, Cirrus went with this to eliminate the keypad. Now, depending on the pilot, this may be a good thing or a bad thing. Some pilots prefer to have your traditional keypads, and you think of it in a real world scenario where you're flying along, maybe you go into turbulent air, uh, it's probably easier to use the keypad than touchscreen. Now I've experienced both um, and I don't really see any difference uh, with it. But yeah, you get nice touchscreen uh, pads here with the G7. Again, new in the series, not necessarily new to the aircraft world. Cool new tech in those display screens is you have 3D taxi. So if you're not a pilot, you may not understand the usefulness of this, but I can tell you that in my experience, when I fly to a new airport, having that chart or diagram of taxiways really helps. But then again, I don't have a really cool colorful 3D uh, screen like this. Another cool feature you can get in this plane is your Cirrus XM. You can have the antenna installed and you would get live weather updates when you're flying. So this could be on a VFR, IFR plan. The Cirrus XM does come with a subscription service but it's a lot quicker to deliver live weather updates to you than say your standard ADS-B. Within the new tech, you also get automatic fuel selector. That's a no-brainer, and I think that's, that's a cool safety feature that I would handpick any day of the week. Generally speaking, when you fly the small piston airplanes, you have to time yourself to change or select fuel uh, from one tank to another. But now you have a system that would do it for you automatically. You just set it in and boom, you're good to go. I think that's a really cool feature uh, in the G7. Your flap switches are also different in the G7. And Sirius now claims that you have overspeed and underspeed protection to extend your flaps. Again, this may be new in the G7, but it's not new in the single piston world because that's something I had in an experimental airplane. Guess what? If I'm flying along and the speed that I've already set in my Garmin panel, if that speed is not met or I'm not within that envelope, if I try to use my flaps, it's not going to extend itself. When we step away from the screens, a lot of the features that you already have in the SR series, uh, you still have. You still have a nice middle console there. You have some cubby space. And as you know, most Cirrus, if not all Cirrus SR22s, you have a one lever, so you don't mess with prop and mixture and things like that. Um, so you still have that. And my God, this interior, I best in class, in my opinion. Um, if you care about things like this, which I do, I believe as a pilot, you're going to be spending most of your time inside of the airplane. Again, I, I just... I love when attention is paid to detail in the interior of an aircraft and Cirrus outdone themselves again uh, with the new G7. And what's cool about the Cirrus experience is as a customer, generally you're able to design your own interior and you're able to pick whatever colors, both for your interior and your exterior for that matter. Um, and you're obviously paying high dollars for it, but you do get that experience. I think for Cirrus customers, this G7 will make it a lot easier to transition from piston engine to turbine powered engine in the Vision Jet. Now, let me tell you some of the marks that I think they missed with this G7. And perhaps maybe they'll bring it up in another generation, right? So for one, I'm looking at a lot of these features, and yes, a lot of them are really neat and cool, and they're new to the G7, but as I've said multiple times, some of these stuff already exists with other aircraft. So it's not new to the aviation world, particularly in this category. Um, I think they missed a point by not changing the power plant or giving options for different power plant with the SR22 G7. Uh, so this airplane is powered by Continental IO550 engine. Do you know another airplane that's powered by that one we just reviewed? You can check it out here. 
okay the Columbia 350 is powered by the same engine now what's wrong with that absolutely nothing it's just a very very old engine um, I would have loved to see either a diesel engine option for this plane uh, potentially a turboprop um, or also they could have pressurize the cabin i'm just saying because when you look at all the planes that you can get for around the same money which we'll talk about in a little bit you do have some really nice pressurized cabin aircraft that you can get for around the same price or even maybe less than what you'd be paying for this new Cirrus sr22 so i think option for a different power plant would be the most that stands out to me um, I was even thinking the Lycoming and IE, that's a, a FADEC engine that could have been fit in for this new model. But we're not going to get that. You get this really cool tech features uh, in the G7. Now let's talk about the pricing. Okay, this is where we usually lose most of the audience. Um, as I said, from the jump, uh, Cirrus is a premium when it comes to single piston engines. The starting price for the new G7 is right under a million dollars. So you're looking at $965,000. Now, depending on what you put in it, uh, colors, design, features, uh, Cirrus also has anti-icing. So you get Fiki, you, I think it's, a, I don't think that's standard. I think that's a feature that you can add. Uh, so if you add all the goodies, okay, then you're definitely gonna be over a million. Uh, generally speaking, you're probably, if you want the top tier of this model, and that is the SR22T with the, all the cool features, you're probably looking closer to $1.3 million brand new for this airplane. And that's why I said, when you think of other products or other airplanes you can get for around the same price, then you're, you're really competing here with some really good and practical airplanes. Now, that said, I've mentioned it before on this channel that when it comes to buying airplanes, preference does matter, right? Branding does matter. Your experience does matter. I think whether you're an enthusiast or you have experience owning or flying your own airplane, what you'll understand or what I would like for you to understand is that when you purchase an airplane or you become an owner, generally the spending starts after you buy the airplane. And you're going to need a lot of help once you purchase the airplane. For manufacturers, the post-sale is where all the work comes in because for either new or old pilots, you're gonna to need to maintain that equipment. You're going to need things here and there. And from my experience, Sirius has done a neat job in taking care of their customers. So the experience does matter, right? When you're thinking, man, if I'm gonna spend a million dollars and some change, your experience goes into it. You're not just buying the airframe or the aircraft, you're also buying the experience as the operator for this brand. And that's something to consider, okay? So depending on how fat your pocket is or how shallow your pocket is, I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about the new Series G7? If you enjoyed this video, again, please give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Again, my name is Mike. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.